Welcome to Online Storytime with Mrs. Venable. Thanks so much for joining me today. Hi everyone, welcome back to week four of Online Storytime with me, Miss Venable. I'm really excited to have a special guest reader here with us today, my husband, Mr. Venable. Hey guys. A special hello to all my Mops Cubs. I hope you guys are doing really well at home and I miss you so much. This week, we're going to be reading Noodle Magic by Rosanna Greenfield Thong and illustrated by May Lo So. It's a special book because it's written in the style of a Chinese folktale. And that means it's a type of story that's usually passed down by word of mouth through generations. And it often teaches us about a certain culture or community. It's all about a young girl named May and her grandpa too. And how they work together to make some really special noodles. As in past weeks, this video is being filmed with permission from Scholastic. Uh, my husband, Mr. Venable, is going to be reading the part of Grandpa 2 today, so listen for him. But before we read our new story, I want to share some extension activities that were submitted to me after last week's story time. Thanks so much to all the students who submitted awesome work to me this week. Hope you enjoy the story! Last week, your extension activity challenge for Come On Rain was to go and play outside and then write about your fun day playing outside using as many similes as you could. And if you remember, similes are comparisons using the words like or as. I had some really great submissions and I want to share two of them with you. First, Angelina from first grade wrote, one day I was playing with my brother and sister. It was a sunny day and it felt so hot like I was in an oven. So we ate popsicles that were as cold as snow. My brother was about to swing the bat as lightning speed. All of a sudden the ball flew as high as a bluebird in the sky. This was the greatest day I've ever had. The end. Great job, Angelina. I love your similes like hot like you were in an oven and popsicles that were as cold as snow. Great job. Next, Kayleen from second grade wrote, We made s'mores and played tennis and skip rope. The fire was as hot as the sun. The s'mores were like heaven. Great job, Kayleen. I love your similes that your fire was hot as the sun and that your s'mores were like heaven. They sound really delicious. Awesome job to these students. I have a couple of questions for you to think about before we read our story. Remember, anytime you hear a question, feel free to pause the video to think about the answer or to discuss it with your family. Look at the title and illustrations on the front cover of this book. Our book this week is Noodle Magic by Roseanne Greenfield Thong, illustrated by May Lo So. What do you predict this book will be mostly all about? Have you ever cooked before? What food did you cook? Did a family member help you? Last, there's also a vocabulary word you're going to hear in the book that I want to make sure you understand. It's the word emperor. An emperor is a man who rules an empire. So you can almost think of the emperor as the king. Noodle Magic by Roseanne Greenfield Thong, illustrated by May Lo So. The Emperor's birthday was coming and excitement filled the air. Every day, May watched Grandpa Too make magic with his hands and a bit of dough. She loved the powdery flakes that hung in the air and freckled the morning light. Every evening, Grandpa slapped the dough on the table, kneaded it with his hands, and stretched it into coils. Everyone oohed and awed over Grandpa Two's noodles, even the moon goddess who brightened the night sky. Can you make a jump rope from noodles? asked May. Simple as a sunflower seed, said Grandpa. How about string for our kites? a neighbor asked. Easy as a sea breeze, said Grandpa. Late that night, as the moon goddess lit up the sky, May heard slap, knead, stretch. The next 
next morning, May and her friends played and jumped with strands of white, weedy dough. If only I had your gift, May sighed. I think you just might, said Grandpa. But May knew that no one could spin magic like Grandpa, too. One afternoon, May watched the sky fill with fluffy pink creatures. Can you catch clouds with noodles? she asked. Fast as a flying fish, said Grandpa. That night, as moonlight flooded the room, May watched Grandpa slap, knead, and stretch. The next morning, they gathered streams of fluffy pink clouds just as the sun was rising. Your magic's the best, said May. But it's time for you to learn, Grandpa said. On the day before the Emperor's birthday, everyone was making something special. Everyone except for Grandpa, too. The villagers were puzzled. Noodles were needed on every table, especially long-life noodles for the Emperor. This year, it's your turn to make noodle magic, Grandpa told May. May was terrified. She measured carefully, and together they slapped, kneaded, and stretched. The rest is up to you, Grandpa said. But as hard as she tried, May's noodles were as ordinary as a pot of white rice. She had to think of something quick. Can you give me magic? she asked Grandpa. Grandpa stroked his beard. Trust in yourself, May, he said. May doubted Grandpa. She had never made noodle magic before. The moon shone brightly into the workroom as May thought hard. Can noodles reach the moon? she asked. That's as wishful as the wind, Grandpa laughed. Whatever for? A gift for the moon goddess, said May. I could ask her for magic in return. You have all the magic you need, said Grandpa too. That night, as Grandpa slept, May tried to slap and knead. Just before sunrise, Grandpa returned. My hands are tired, said May. My arms aren't strong enough. Can you help? Grandpa nodded. hey ya hey -ya. Ay Watcha! Fay! Fay! Together, they stretched and pulled until her dough reached the forest edge. May spun the dough into a huge ball of noodles and tossed it skyward. Faster and faster, it spiraled into space. As it got close to the moon, she watched it shrink to the size of a wheel, then a pumpkin, and finally a tiny dot. May called out to the moon goddess. The village needs noodles for the emperor's birthday. I need some of your magic. Whoa! The moon goddess was delighted with the gift, though she knew May had to do this job herself. Thank you, May, she said. But remember, magic must come from within. May took a deep breath. She had to think of something. She closed her eyes tight and remembered all that Grandpa Two had taught her. With a tug of war twang, May yanked her into the noodles. They stretched back and forth, up and down, until finally there was a snap. The sky rained noodles, small bow ties and pillows, large coils and springs. It was a meteor shower of dough. There was enough for everyone's celebration, including a magical long life strand for the emperor. May's noodles had turned to magic. It was inside her all along. From then on, the only sounds in May's workshops were slap, knead, stretch, and whoa! Now let's talk about our after reading questions. 
How are Grandpa 2's noodles special and different from other noodles? Which of these words do you believe best describes Grandpa 2? Is he kind, angry, or impolite? How do you know? What problem did May face in this story? What important lesson did May learn by the end of the story? Do you think this story is fiction, which means not true, or nonfiction, which means true? How do you know? We also have a new extension activity this week. Our story was all about a food that is used often in Chinese cooking, noodles. This week, I want to challenge you to learn all about foods from other countries, too. I want you to go to the attached Google Slides presentation that's called, What Do Kids Eat for Lunch Around the World? You can read and look at the pictures on each slide to learn about food that kids in different countries eat for lunch. Then I want you to answer these questions. Which of the kids' foods sounded the most delicious to you? Why? Is there a special food that you and your family like to cook together? Describe the food or share the recipe. You can also draw a picture of the food or share a photograph if your family cooks it this week. You can email your writing to me at venableb at russellcsd.net or you can post your work on Google Classroom and I might just share it on next week's story time. Thank you so much for joining me at Storytime today. Remember to look for new Storytime videos posted every Wednesday on this YouTube channel, your teacher's Google Classroom, or on the Mount Olive Primary School Facebook page. Next week, we'll be reading Mother Bruce by Ryan T. Higgins. Happy reading! Love, Miss Venable.